The Abyss of Panathor has corrupted many beings, but who are the strongest? The dwarfs or the orcs? So this is round three of the one-day tournament that I attended quite a little while ago, but somehow I still remember. It probably helps that I also write articles about this, and then also have to organize these pictures to make these very videos. So it still always refreshes the damage in my mind. Damage being when I lose. Um, so I won the first round against the Halflings, and I lost the second round against the Night Stalkers, but only just because of a slight thing where I didn't understand the win conditions of the scenario, so it didn't perfectly measure the area. But that is fine because I will learn for next time which is good because there's a big tournament coming up and I want to make sure I play it right. So you'd think with one win and one loss it should be a pretty easy final game for the day. No! It's Andrew Goodman and his newly improved Abyssal Dwarfs. And I know that Andrew Goodman has a reputation from yesteryears for being very nasty with his Abyssal Dwarfs and particularly the Mortars that he has. And they are back. This list has three of those heavy mortars that are really, really quite nasty. But that's okay, because uh, I should have a plan against those, right? The rest of the army should be pretty easy to push over to get to them. Well, let's see. So, first, let's go through my army quite quickly. We have, in this 2100 points list, because the tournament coming up is 2100 points, so we're all practicing for it madly, so that someone can win. Uh, I have one regiment of unforged orcs for unlocks, one horde of riftforged legionaries, so they're the tougher orcs, better than the unforged. Then I have a troop of rift walkers, which are a bit like race in that they are chaff and fearless, so that's pretty cool. Then I have a horde of hell strikers with the staying stone to increase that wavering value stat by one, so they're 16, 17, otherwise they're very much like dracons. Then I have three amber oxen because we've settled that as the plural so amber oxen of three um that is pretty much the main shooting unit that's available in the reforged orcs army list unless you want to go skulks and i do not want to go skulks just yet then i have a war drum to give some rally rally one for reforged and rally two for anything that's a normal orc which is just the unforged then we have the Stormforge Shrine, which is a fantastic shrine. Um, really, the reason you want to have it in your um, Reforged Orc army is because it has a Fury Aura for everything, so that's pretty awesome. But it also has the ability to cast a whole bunch of spells over and over and over, so it can cast Bane Chant lots of times, which is really good when your whole line is engaged all at once. So, if anything, just for the fact that it buffs the entire army, that's why you want to get it. Then I have a Rift Forger, um, which is a little hero with a few attacks um, with the Blade of Slashing. He exists solely um, to accept um, the Host Shadow Beast spell from the Stormforge Shrine. The optimal build is that the Rift Forger himself will have the Host Shadow Beast spell, but I did not have the 20 point spare with which I could give him the Host Shadow Beast spell. Um, you can see that this list is very lean on items, there's not really anything I can take out, and if anything does come out, then unlocks start popping off. So it's uh, it's tight, and that's what it is. So he's got a Blade of Slashing to improve his normal attacks, and then hopefully the Stormforge Shrine can give him the boost that he needs to really deal a lot of damage. Then we have one Stormbringer on Hellstrike Manticore, and that is just a kind of the Dracon hero kind of guy. So that goes with the, the Hellstrikers. And then finally we have the formation the Iron Boots, which is a whole bunch of regiments of Reforged Orcs. We have two regiments of Reforged Legionaries and one regiment of Reborn Legionaries, which is very confusing, especially for opponents, because the only way you can tell them apart, they're exactly the same models pretty much as Reforged Legionaries, but they carry the two-handed weapons. Um, and they are inspiring and in this formation everyone gets a nerve bump Which is pretty handy. So it makes them very tough regiments and then the reborn legionaries also get the wild charge d3 aura for orc only um, Which just affects the unforged orcs and of course themselves so you know they're, they're slightly faster Which is kind of cool, but it's really just a formation that you want to get just so that you can get chunkier regiments um, And that's why I've got it. So chunkier regiments lots of uh, unit strength in this army. It's we play a scenario relatively well, it's just a little bit slow getting around, I've found, um, because yeah, all the all the infantry just wants to take turn, take its time getting up, and since everything's got bigger bases, it's very often bumping into various kinds of difficult terrain and slowing down, so you can't just go 10, 10, and be on the other side of the board, it's really kind of going up in an awkward fashion, so, <laughs> awkward, awk, um, there's a pun for you today. So that's my list. So what about the <laughs> the Abyssal Dwarfs that I'll be going with against uh, from Andrew Goodman? 
Affiliation partner of the channel, Pathfinder Game Distribution, are the only exclusively Mantic stockers in Australia. So if you're in Australasia area and need some Mantic product, be it Kings of War, Firefight, Dead Zone or Terrain Crate, then check out Pathfinder Game Distribution. Use the link in the description below or the code Caffeinated Warlord for 15% off. Well, it is hard. It starts off nice. Two troops of gargoyles. Can't blame a person for bringing gargoyles. They're pretty fancy chaff. They're pretty good. They're very cheap. So you might as well have two troops of gargoyles. Why not? It really gets nasty when we get to the other thing that starts with G, and that uh, is the grotesques. We have four hordes of grotesques. Four of them. One of them is especially nasty because it has the Brew of Sharpness. The other one's got Fire Oil, which is completely useless against my army. Um, but yeah, one has Brew of Sharpness, which is especially scary. But they're already quite a scary unit because they've been they've been improved a bit. I mean, it's just anything that can hit very consistently thanks to that Strider and it's got Thunder 2 crushing one and Vicious. It's just, yeah, it's going to convert a lot of its hits. Even though it hits on fours, a lot of those hits will get it converted um, to full-on damage. So you expect them to do eight to nine damage each time they hit. Obviously, they're not going to go so well in the second round of combat, but very rarely is there a second round of combat when it comes to grotesques. Then, we also have three Angkor Heavy Mortars, and that's what I was talking about before. These are the fantastic mortars that these guys have. Um, they're fantastic um, because their blast is D3 plus 2, which is a lot... It's, you know, normally it's D3 plus 1, or just D3, so bolt throwers tend to be D3, blast D3. Um, and then... Uh, normal kinds of rock throwers and you know lobbers and things like that will be d3 plus one and these guys are d3 plus two so they're at minimum going to be doing three hits if they do hit um, on per hit so you know they can go they can go up to a whopping 10 hits um, per mortar which is just yeah it's terrifying um, they also have shattering and they also have vicious so the, what that vicious means is that damage conversion is so much higher because you know so often you find like, yes, I hit with my rock thrower, and then you go to roll your, your damage, especially with the goblin ones, because the goblins are very vanilla. And wah, wah, you roll a one, you roll a couple ones. You know, because you've only got two or three dice to play with, and you roll a couple ones, you're like, oh. But these guys, they're just very consistently getting their damage through. They're, they're quite similar to the Balefire Catapults, and the, the Balefire Catapults have a pseudo-vicious kind of rule. Um, but yeah, they don't have shattering, not like these guys. So yeah, the Angkor Heavy Mortars, three of them. As, that's nasty, but they do cost a pretty penny, so you know he is paying for them. So um, then we have a hex caster with hex three weakness three, um, and the, it has this ability uh, feedback, so it can actually do some damage with those when it hits. But it doesn't do as much damage as the Twilight Kin ones, so you know it's still inferior to them. But it, it, it's pretty good. He, he uses it a lot just to put weakness here and there, and just to do a bit more damage on top of their ankle heavy mortars. Um, yeah, and then we finally have the real chaff in this army, as I would eventually find out, which are the Abyssal Halfbreed Champions. He has three of them. One of them has the Gnome Glass Shield, which is really quite annoying because they're already defense five, and then that one's defense six. It's hard to get through. Um, and yeah, these are just great little um, individuals that can get in the way, contribute to combats as well, because they do have six attacks with crushing two, which is uh, really nasty. But they're mighty as well, so it's really hard to um, just get through them. They can get in the way. Um, and that's exactly what he does with them. So, yeah, he's, he's, that's his army. It's, it's. I just saw it and I'm like, I'm not sure what to target first because there's nothing that really is easy to take out straight away because it's all defense five apart from the gargoyles and it's it's all going to hit me really hard. So there's a lot of things I can't just be like, I'll take a hit from that. And there's it's also because it's got the four... We've got four of these uh, hammer units, the grotesques, and I don't have that much chaff to just take all of it. And I don't know if any of my regiments can really just take a charge from one, or well, definitely not two. But yeah. So, yeah, these things are going through my mind as I see this list, and it's the third round, and I'm like, Whoa. you know, you know, you're not feeling, you're not feeling real smart. By the time you get to the third round, you're just thinking, okay, I got, I've got my habits that I play, and I'm gonna just play those. So, turn one straight away. I just thought I'd tell you guys that because here you can see I obviously took a picture after I started my movement. So we'll have to do an explanation with my movement already very visible. But let's go with the terrain. So it's always good to lay down what terrain is what so that no one's getting confused. So we've got two forests. One forest here on the left, on the far left, and then a forest here in the middle. And then we have two flat terrains. So you can see there's this uh, flat piece of pondage water. And the other flat terrain is over here, an unpainted kind of rocky bit. 
which I think also might be a river. Um, then we have two hills. So there's one hill here, one hill here, and the obstacles sticking out in between and blocking terrain, these little huts either side. So, you know, the, the, the terrain's kind of a bit spread out. I think the only major annoyance is that there's this forest here that'll take me, yeah, like I said, it takes slows down my army quite a lot. Um, so that's the main thing. And there's also, I can kind of hide stuff behind these hills, but the main thing I know that he's going to be shooting at, which are the Hell Strikers, really, yeah, I put them out here because then not all of them could shoot it, but really in retrospect, what I should have done is put them behind this forest and behind my army. Um, he'd still be able to see them and shoot them, but not all of them. So let's go into the deployment so you can see. So here's, here's Mortars. One's here, right next to that blocking terrain. So it's going to be harder to charge. And then two right at the back there. So those, if I were to have put my Hell Strikers right behind this forest, chances are these two wouldn't have been able to shoot them for at least two turns. And then this one would have been popping off onto it for a bit. Um, but instead I put them out here on the flank because, uh, you know, I've been doing that pretty much this whole tournament where you're like I've got my Dracon unit it's going on the flank you know it's going to come in and you know cause stress so that's why I thought I'll put it on the flank but in retrospect uh, definitely shouldn't have done that because it was still pretty open to most of the shots and it alone cannot break through these formations of grotesque so let's go into his deployment of the grotesque so he's actually just split them up into two so there's two grotesques over here two grotesques over here they go on together and these two have two half-breed champions and gargoyles so it's just essentially got this cloud of chaff and then over here we have one half-breed champion and one gargoyles so another cloud of chaff so it's just there's the the half-breed champions and the gargoyles existing just to get in the way so that the grotesques can hit in at full strength they're not disordered and so yeah with the hell strikers over here i have this terrible situation that i know i can't kill either grotesque on the charge and so i'm just kind of stuck here um and but i put them there so really what they should have done is should have been put in at the back of my army because yeah i can i've got the speed but i'm I'm going to be in a terrible situation where I start getting shot and I won't be able to get into those charges because he will have the chaff in the right spot to stimmy my advance. So my deployment, as we've seen in most of the games so far, is I find a piece of blocking terrain and then anchor the whole army off it so that something is like something is kind of blocked. So in this case, we've got the horde of Riftforge legionaries right there, so that's the big ones there. And then behind that, we have the shrine, the drum, the Riftwalkers that act as the chaff for it because I usually want to chaff up the big horde. I would like them to hit. And then there's the little lone Rift Forger there. Then we have the three uh, regiments. So this one is the Unforged. I usually like to put that right in the middle so it can kind of go out and be like, charge me! Um, and, you know, just kind of start the whole exchange um, by offering them up. And then I have my two Rift Forge Legionaries from the formation with the Iron Boots. They're a bit chunkier, they are higher nerve than usual. And here's the Reborn one. And you can see what I can say. Like, if you were just looking at these, just like, Orcsy, Orcs, Orcs. Which one's the one that's the inspiring one with a Wild Charge D3? Well, it's these guys with the two-handed hammers. Thankfully, I can say it's the guys with the sofa. <laughs> That's immediately what you see is the sofa because they're invading an office. It's the CEO's office. And if you, one day, I'll, I should do a video where I introduce the army because the, I'm quite proud of what I put on the laptop. Stephen Tuck did that with one of his uh, miniatures. He did a UB game on the laptop, and so that's what I did. I painted a little, little miniature UB game there. Uh, Universal Battle for those unaware. And then I've got my three Amber Ox right behind the reforged. Uh, regiment so that they can pop up on the hill and start laying down fire what will i be shooting not really sure but you know at least they they're piercing one they can do some shots so hopefully they'll be able to put some damage on some things so this is the army now the scenario we're playing i should say is stockpiles so that's why we've only got three tokens one in the very center right here and then one here on this midline and another one out here on the left now stockpile involves each of these tokens actually being a pile of tokens so this one's got two this one's got three and this one's got two um, and so you have to get onto them pick them up like a normal loot token but you can only pick up one per turn so if you want to pick up some more you kind of got to stay there and keep picking them up so yeah it's a cool little scenario it's, it means you can't just go in and get it and run i mean you could but there's a there's a good reason why you might want to stick around and pick up some more so it just changes things up and there's a lot of tokens on the battlefield so you know there's a lot to play for so, with that introduced, obviously my first turn, I got, I got the first turn, I moved on up, and that's what I've done here in a kind of staggered line. I wanted these guys to stay behind the hill, and, you know, now I'm looking back, I'm like, why, why do I care? 
because I, I didn't want to get sh them shot because I was thinking, okay, these guys won't be able to shoot the Hell Strikers as much, which I moved up. They might be shooting some of my regiments, but I really should have just gone boom, put them up and let let them be the target and present them and also get forward so that the Amber Ox can start laying down fire. But what I did instead was just move very tentatively, especially being limited by the fact that these guys are only going up five inches because of the, um, the terrain. So everything's kind of getting a bit slow, including my brain. Uh, but the Hell Strikers are out on the on the flank, and so I'm just, you know, a angling towards them and seeing what he will do. Uh, so yeah, it's just pictures of the tokens, so that's in the forest, uh, yeah, just to make sure I didn't miss it. So in his turn, he moves up aggressively with the grotesques on the left, um, and he's being very smart. These gargoyles are not even going to be part of the chaff. He can, obviously, this is the problem with um, the Reforged Orcs, is that they're all speed 5, so it's pretty easy to get the charge on them, right? Um, and so he's just moving these guys up without much chaff, letting the gargoyles go off and eventually pick up those tokens. But he won't get them to begin with, because there's no point going in there because the Ambrox will be able to shoot them. The moment he gets into that terrain, I can shoot them, and it doesn't take many piercing one hits, even in cover, to take out gargoyles. You pretty much you can get it on the first go, um, just one damage. So he's de that's why he's holding back there. So it's never good to go too quickly for the tokens, especially if you're going with a very weak unit. So he's got them on the other side of the forest, so they can't be targeted whatsoever. So there's always things to learn when you're going against Andrew Goodman, because he, he always has a plan and plays very, very tightly. Um, over here, uh, less aggressive, because I've obviously got my speed 10 uh, Hell Strikers that have staked out a claim. So instead, you can see that the cloud of uh, chaff has been deployed. We've got annoying gargoyles and an angle and then we've got the two chaffy units so i could definitely could charge gargoyles take them out but you know what's going to happen i'm going to get obliterated by grotesques so it's just uh, a terrible situation and this one is the one with the gnome glass shield this one with the giant batter this abyssal half breed so even charging that you've got no guarantee and there's a bit of terrain there to ruin my day so i'd get hindered so there's nothing i can do to take out multiple things at once maybe i could charge that one but yeah so that's the situation there. So he's got all the chaff deployed to get in my way, and I'm just going to have to see how I get through it. And oh yeah, and there, there's the hex caster right in the middle, just like wah, shooting off his spells. So already just with two that can actually see me, the Ancor Heavy Mortar has managed to do four damage on my Hell Strikers, which is making me very nervous. Turn two. Now moving around, what have I decided to do? Well. This army, uh, this chunk of the army has got as far as the blocking terrain and we're going to try and sit here until the all clear is there so I can charge into some grotesques perhaps. That's kind of the plan. Um, so yeah, that's the the hordes pretty much just not quite flush with the blocking terrain but I don't need to be. I'm not really worried about flanks. Um, and then the rest of the army is kind of in this weird curve where I still don't want to get on the hill and I'm looking back and I'm like, why? He's going to shoot the Hellstrike. He's going to keep shooting the Hellstrike. Just, just get on the hill. Maybe I'm thinking if I stay behind the hill, the grotesques can't charge me. Um, but really what I should have been doing, and I'm going to say this now, even if it's a bit of a spoiler, and I know some people don't like spoilers, but hey, let's get tactical. What I should have done is been like, you know what I do have? I do have a chaff. I have Ambrox. I should have been putting the Ambrox right in the front, move them up. Maybe you would shoot them. You probably wouldn't. Maybe you would charge them with his Abyssal Halfbreed. That's okay, because then I can charge in with something, and I'll still have more Ambrox. So I should have had the screen of three Ambrox spread out just enough so that there's gaps where regiments can also come in with the charge and have my own screen of chaff. But instead, I didn't. I just kind of kept them um, here at the back because I find them... So, uh, it's probably because over the previous two games, they were doing quite well, shooting a lot, and so they'll their value in my heart was increasing and I didn't want to just throw them out there and get them killed and squished like the bugs that they are. I wanted to keep them um, safe and so that's why they're sitting there but I really shouldn't have been doing that. I should have been putting them out in front and they would have been able to shoot as well so it would have been win-win. I'd be shooting with them already and that might have changed his priorities for his um, mortars. They wouldn't have been shooting my Hellstrikers but you know that's that was a situation and you can see here so this four, first four damage was done, and then I was like, ooh, I didn't like that. So I moved him back. Big mistake. They were here. He moved up with this chaff. I was thinking, I was looking, I was obviously thinking, oh, charge here, that's a terrible situation. I charge here, a terrible situation. Oh, there's nothing I can kill, and then I'll get killed by grotesques. But hey, ultimately, I will be killing something. And you never know what might happen. If I charge with the Stormbringer and 
the Hell Strikers and I charge up. Maybe uh, the Hell Strikers hit this Abyssal Half Breed and then the Stormbringer goes there. I turn in such a way that only one Grotesque can charge in. One Grotesque might not be able to kill my Hell Strikers. Might not. I mean, we're already on four damage, but hey, you know, maybe not. So that that should have been what I would be doing. But instead, I started getting hesitant and I thought, okay, no, I need to preserve these health strikers. I'm going to bring them back. They won't be able to shoot as much. But like I said, even one can potentially hit with up to 10 hits by itself because of that D3 plus two with two attacks. So even allowing one to see you, you might as well, yeah, I should have just charged charge with them at this very point. That's when I should have charged. But I move back instead to try and protect them. And so you can see where if instead maybe they were here, they wouldn't be getting shot at all. Sure, something else was it. Something's going to get shot. The Angkor Heavy Mortars aren't here to play games. They're here to put damage on it and make me make bad decisions like I am right now. And so that's that's how it's going. Um, and so then in his turn, in his turn too, he starts putting on more damage. They're up to seven now and they get wavered. So now they really are stuck there. Fantastic. Good work. So yeah, I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm lambasting myself now just because I'm like... That was bad use. To be fair, I don't have any kind of Dracon units in my armies up to this point. Somehow, somehow I've just managed to be in armies where there are no Dracons. And so they are not something I'm used to using, but yeah, you know, I should be get used to using them because they're expensive and I put some effort into painting them. So, and you can just to see how the rest of his armies moved up. Now the grotesque have mounted the hill. He's realized that I'm a big pushover. I'm not gonna charge my health strikers. He's like, all right, let's get these grotesques in. So they're there. Um, the gargoyles, where have the gargoyles gone? Oh, I think they got killed. Something killed the gargoyles, so they're gone. And I do not have record or recollection. I mean, they're over there, so I'm, maybe I shot them with... Oh, no, I would have shot them with a lightning bolt from my good old uh, shrine. It does have a nice lightning bolt in it, so that would have done. So yeah, the shrine probably would have killed that. That's the only shooting over there anyway, so nothing else could have done it. We haven't got a combat going. Um, or do we? Well, anyway, mysteries abound. And over here, he's moved up with his grotesques. Turn three. So here's my turn three. I have uh, decided to deploy my own chaff. So on the right here, we've got the, uh, the Riftforge Legionaries moving up. The horde of them. It's a whole horde with the Riftwalkers in front, so they can't get a double charge on. So go on, hit me. Um, obviously, my Hellstrikers are being ridiculous back here. Um, Unforged, Riftforged, everything's kind of just moving up. I don't. I think the Unforged are now in range, so it's at least posing the question, and they won't be hindered. So they're not going to kill them, but at least it's the question. Like, oh, here they are. You're going to have to do something now. And all the Riftforged are now angling their way around, and I'm still being stupid with my Amberox. They're just staying behind there as if they are the key thing to my army. And guess what? They're not. They're not. They're just 330 points of, um, yes, units, strength one, little monster things, but they're just... 110 points each. They can just be chaff, and I should have been using them as such, but here they are, stuck behind my other units. They've been trying to do some shooting, but yeah, really, it's dismal. Um, so yeah, I've just got my army just moving up, and really, so far, nothing to do with the scenario, although I think I will be picking up a couple with the Unforged Orcs, because, you know, they're on it now. So they're on that middle stockpile token, and I'm on this one here, but I haven't picked them up yet. So... But what can you see is a major mistake here that I should have picked up on myself. I'll give you a little moment. Well, it is that this unit did not turn. I didn't turn it, I just left it there. I should have turned it a little bit because right now, what? That's a flank. That's a flank there. Bang. So that's what <laughs> that's what Andrew will pick up on. If you give him a flank, he'll definitely take it. And you know what you shouldn't get a flank from? You shouldn't get a flank from grotesques. Grotesques, even you know when they're hitting on fours, they're definitely uh, not great because they can skew either way. But yeah, you give them a flank, then they suddenly get heaps of attacks. All that conversion, they've got that strider, so nothing, nothing's going to stop them. So yeah, they're in the flank. These ones are in the front at the same time, which is fair enough. Um, along with the abyssal half breed champion, so they're going to try and smash through this unit. But they are pretty tough. And so now my unforged orcs are facing nothing because they've gone out of the way. So that. That might be the collapse of my left flank right there. Uh, this is just showing exactly the terrible situation that I'm in. These are the cool old Dragon Ogre models as well. They're quite nice and they're well painted. As you can see, even when you zoom in this far. Ah, uh, yes, and so they're gone. They didn't. It's no surprise to anyone that they, they didn't survive, but um, that's what happens when you give a flank. And I think it was yeah, copious amounts of damage were dealt. But 
somehow my other uh, guys, these ones, survived. He was real miffed with that, but that, you know, the the rally and the fact that they have that nerve bump, they get up to, um, so they start at 14, 16, with the nerve bump, they become 15, 17, and then with the rally, they become 16, 18, which is a very decent regiment. So yeah, it, the grotesques, just hitting on fours, you know, it's, it's, a, it's definitely lots of damage, but yeah, it just didn't quite roll enough, and yeah, I'm fine. I think they were wavered, but guess what? We have a Fury Aura. But you know who else is wavered? The Hell Strikers. Once again, the Hell Strikers are wavered. So really, you can see all the way back when I first got that first damage, bang, I should have just zipped off and charged. I should have gone straight into combat, but I didn't because I was hesitating and waiting for something. Maybe I was waiting to, yeah, I was probably thinking, well, I might prefer to be, you know, when I charge in that, you know, at least the other orcs will catch up, but they take so long. So yeah, really, they should have been the second or third line behind that horde of orcs so that maybe they could jump over um, as the orcs are moving up. I don't know. It might have been in the same same situation because somewhere they're going to get hit by mortars. They're height four. So they, they get seen over everything and the only thing that will hide them properly is the forest until they're in it. But then at least they have some cover, perhaps. Anyway, so yeah, they wavered. And the Stormbringer, this guy, is just like, well, I see you guys. i got to go off and actually do something. And so here, uh, this is my turn five. Yeah, so there should be a turn five something. Anyway, should say something where it's like, now my turn. Anyway, so this is the next turn, which would be turn four, I'm guessing. And so what I've managed to do, yes, we've got Furiora, so these guys could counter charge. So the, these are the reborn orcs now that have come in with the Riftforge. So the Riftforge were the ones that were charged, and the reborn that were sitting back here with their two-handed hammers have gone in as well. So we've got a double attack, which is uh, very good. And then I've set up, I've finally been like, oh, you know, I can use these amber oxen as screening. So here they are, finally actually, you know, making up a nice screen where you have to get through two, three, four, like three, they take a few turns to get through all those amber oxen. And so that's what they're doing there. What they did manage to do, and you can see that this is fantastic, all their combined shooting managed to waver these grotesques. So uh, there we go, five damage and then a good roll, boom, wavered. So at least these grotesques, which were going to collapse my entire left flank, have now been kind of like slowed down for at least a turn. So that's a nice a bit of a reprieve while I try and beat the crap out of these other grotesques. And these unforged orcs, you can see that they've picked up a token and they're turning this way because I'm expecting that these guys will be completely here and I'm just going to have to hit them in the flank with my unforged orcs to really finish it off. Over here, well, the, um, the, that, uh, yeah, I think, who took out the Rift Walkers? I think the Rift Walkers were killed by one of the Abyssal Halfbreed champions um, and now I've charged, yeah, because I didn't take a picture of this part of the battlefield last turn, so I apologize, but yeah, one of the Abyssal Halfbreed champions charged the Riffaugus, killed them, and so now it's up to these guys to kill that gnome glass shielded um, Abyssal Halfbreed champion, and then there's another Abyssal Halfbreed champion there, and so now I'm trying to be like, well, please don't charge me, because those grotesques are definitely in range, so while I deal with this gnome glass shieldy dude, I have sent in my Stormbringer and the Rift Forger is kind of just kind of getting in the way, but he can be completely ignored to be honest. So we'll see how that goes. Um, and then it's time to cast some stuff. Um, and yeah, I think that's a weakness on that button. So he's hex cast to cast weakness on these guys. That's why they've got one damage. So they're going to have a real tough time getting through that defense six. And we're still wavered. <laughs> Stop. Yeah, I just moved him back. What are you still going to do? I'm just hoping, please don't shoot me. But yeah, we're turn four and I'm still getting shot in my poor hell strikers. The only thing you can say good of them is that they are taking, they're, just, they're taking the heat of the health, the, the, the mortar. So yeah, good on, I suppose. But very unexpectedly, I managed to destroy those grotesques. So yeah, these regiments combined their efforts, managed to destroy the grotesques. I don't need the unforged orcs facing that way at all. So now we've got these three regiments facing up against one wavered grotesque. So suddenly the left flank, not so bad. Good on you, Amberox. You should have been at the front shooting the whole time. Who'd have thought? So now all that remains over here is that one damaged horde of uh, grotesques, which won't be doing anything next turn, and this half-breed champion, which will obviously try and go into this t damaged um, Rift Orge Orc unit, it's already got 12 damage on it. It could probably just take it out by itself. It really just needs to do some damage. Um, over on the other side, well, we only did five damage to an Abyssal Half-Breed Champion, and it's got 12, 14 nerves, so, you know, that's uh, not likely to take it out. And so, yeah, a combination of the weakness didn't help. Um, yeah, so that's 
Not a great situation there, and the grotesques. I think I did a little bit of damage to these ones here, but yeah, I'm just. This guy is now chaff, and he is expensive chaff. That is a guy you don't want to be chaff. So in his turn, he moves back his grotesques just a bit to just get out of the way. And yes, as I said, he will be charging in with his abyssal half-breed champion that's got nothing else to do but use his six attacks to hopefully take about take out these reforged orcs. Um, over on the other side, yeah, we got the. Uh, one charge into the Rift Forger, who will definitely collapse and die. We've got Regeneration here, so he's a really good little tanky, tanky, mighty hero, so I've got to get through that. And my Stormbringer is now getting attacked too, so really what will happen is these will probably die, and now I'll still be here trying to get through this one character with a whole horde of Orcs. Ugh. And I think another weakness went on there, because the button's still there. Ugh, disaster. So, yeah, we're just struggling our way through things. All right, let's see what the aftermath is. Oh, did I get the aftermath? That's one damage. I think I, f yeah, I finally got hexed. Um, it's quite hard to hex him because he's got spell ward, but he realized that after that previous turn, I think I managed to do bane chant, bane chant, bane chant. Well, not that one. But yeah, I managed to do a lot of bane chants. And so once that happened, he was like, oh, I've really got to start hexing that thing. But it's got spell ward, so it's not that easy to hex. And they're gone. So in his turn five, turn four, so that's turn four. But yeah, in his turn, he managed to kill my health strikers with his mortars and then here he obviously managed to kill my chaff that must be in his turn four yeah in his turn four so he managed to kill my chaff and then here he managed to uh kill that damaged unit so yeah he did three damage so took him from 12 to 15 so the abyssal halfbreed champion took out that damaged unit of rift forged orcs so i've now lost both the regiments of legionaries from the um formation i've just got the reborn left um yeah, so now we've got to take a charge from those guys. This is not good news. So turn five. Actual turn five. So, well, I can't get through this guy because he's mighty, so I'm charging him with both the Reborn and the Unforged while hopefully being able to shoot with the Amber Oxen into those Grotesques and hold them back a bit further. And yeah, I'm continuing to fight my way through these, but you know what's facing me? Bloody double charge. A double charge from these. And so I'm not really sure what I should have done in this case because I've got no more chaff to hold them up. Um, maybe the war drum should have gone the way, but I've sent the war drum to go pick up some tokens. It does have unit strength one. I can do that. So this is the situation. I don't think I really managed to do much shooting there. Um, but we actually got yeah. So yeah, that's his turn. So yeah, let's see. I was getting pretty intermittent with these shots because you know I was getting tired and I really was focusing on trying to figure out how to win this game or at least not lose it so badly but yeah we're getting both this is this is the mid charge sending them in because i still could i got through one uh abyssal half breed champion but the other one is now in and we've got all kinds of grotesques coming in so say lovey to my poor reborn uh rift forge orc the horde um thankfully i do manage to kill this abyssal half breed champion so at least we're not um in a terrible situation and the amber Ox did manage to do some more damage to them but it wasn't this time i didn't wait for them because i would have been very lucky to do so once again so they got the seven damage and uh yeah we'll just see what they got to start working their way through amber Oxes. so yeah they're just going into the first one they'll definitely kill it but now it's just a matter of time um they they're not going to contribute to the scenario but the scenario is now up to these gargoyles and probably these guys because you can see I've got a token here. So currently, for scenario turn five, I have a token on my horde, I have a token on my unforged orcs, and I think I'm getting a token here on the war drum. Um, and he's got two tokens he can potentially pick up with his gargoyles for turns five and six. Um, and he's also got, if he kills these, he'll get the token off my uh, reforged legionaries. Um, so that's seven damage from the mortars. So now, the, as I feared, the mortars are now going to start shooting my infantry because um, they've stopped killing hell strikers. And so, yeah, they might just start taking out chunks of my army by themselves. Unsurprisingly, the uh, the grotesques do manage to kill an amber ox, but it's just one. There's two more to get through. And also, unsurprisingly, the grotesques manage to get right through that horde and have turned to face my uh, Stormforge shrine. And so my shrine. I charge in, I move things around that are trying to get tokens, so I've got one, two uh, tokens, but he's got one, and the these guys, the uh, the gargoyles are going to get uh, their tokens as well. Turn six, which was actually before, I think, um, so yeah, we've got tokens, he managed to kill my war drum, so the war drum has now dropped the token with his abyssal half-breed champion, 
but that means it's just dropped. He can't pick it up. So I've still got the two token. Ah, oh, still got one token. I've only got one token. This guy's got one. Um, while the uh, the grotesques have it. So actually, there was a moment there where I looked like I was gonna draw or win because I had tokens. But you know, it's only temporary when you've got grotesques running amok. So yeah. They don't manage to kill my Stormforge Shrine, but the Shrine should have been the thing that was picking them up because the Shrine is fantastic at holding tokens because it's a fearless defense 5, like, dash 18. It's fantastic. And that's the end. So it ended with... Um, we didn't have a picture of the, the uh, Gargoyles, but they did manage in that last turn because it was in turn 6 and 7, he felt comfortable to start picking them up, so they only managed to get one token, but they got one token there. One token went on to his gar the, the Grotesques that picked it up from my unit. Um, and I think another one might have picked up the last one because it's a stockpile, so there was one more left sitting there, and it picked up that one. So really all I had was the one on my Unforged Orcs. And the Unforged Orcs didn't get damaged the entire game. So, you know, I mean, that, that's got to be some kind of achievement, right? But, yeah, looking back on this game, the way I should have behaved, um, you could say definitely need to be more aggressive, but aggressive in a different way. So what I should have done has been more aggressive with my own shooting, put the Ambox right at the front, really pressure him, because even though he's defense five, they still don't like getting shot. And it can, like you saw, even just one round of shooting into those grotesques when they broke through on the left, these guys here, I managed to waver them. So that, if that were to have happened, say, in turn one or two, that would have been spectacular. So really what I should have done is put, like I normally do, I usually put the Ambrox right in front of my units or in, in between the units and just put them out there and just started blasting away and made them really think, do I want to shoot with my Mortars at the Hellstrikers? where I might, you know, maybe, you know, he did four damage that first turn. Not great, you know, and it's not going to really stop them. It made me start playing them dumb, but instead he maybe should have been shooting. He might have thought, maybe I need to shut down that shooting. I need to shoot Ambrox. And then my Hellstrikers will still be around. And again, like I said, I think the Hellstrikers would have benefited instead from being behind that forest. So really I should have identified the forest, put them there, or put them on this forest. They didn't have to be on that other side of this building. They could have been behind this forest, moving up, get into the forest, charge out um they would have been contending with this block of uh, grotesques here and i mean the whole deployment could have completely changed you know as, as we're both putting things down you know you say these things as if his deployment would not change whatsoever it probably would have but still having the hell strikers behind either forest would have definitely changed it up because they wouldn't have been taking as much damage and with flying units like that you can have them moving up get into a forest and then they can still charge out of it without being hindered because of that flying rule it means you know they, they leave the difficult terrain but land in open terrain so that's that's what i should have done but is there anything else that you think i should have done in this situation you know it's 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 hard to think of the really good tactical things you know and, you, and over the course of these games is where i was learning to use this army but is there anything else that i should have done differently is there something in the way i should differently uh, deploy differently already at the end by this game i wanted to change up my army a bit and so i can already say that uh the stormbringer has been taken out that is the stormbringer on manticore because it's you know it's, it's fine it's a scoring flying guy but it's just five attacks and i feel like it just really is really just there for the inspiring and it doesn't really do that much damage. Sure, it could get into a flank perhaps, but you know, it's just not its not really contributing the way I want it to, and I've replaced it instead with Thonar, which I feel is not only powerful in terms of the amount of damage he's done, but he, he can do, because he has um, the Storm Strikes. <laughs> he has the army-wide special rule that is uh, actually only on it, like three units the entire army, and those three units are only heroes. And he has it automatically. Um, but Storm Strike, pretty cool because it is uh, Blast 2 for rolls of a 6. Except on him, he has Thunderstruck, which means Blast 2 on rolls of a 5 or a 6. So, you know, one third of the time, he's doing two hits for that one roll. So he can surprise you and do a, a monumental amount of damage all by himself without a Host Shadow Beast. But being an individual, he can get Host Shadow Beasted by the Shrine as well. So that's pretty cool. He's speed 8, so he's a bit slower, but he still can keep up by being an individual with the Hellstrikers, because the Hellstrikers are never really going that fast. And the best part about him is that Thunderstruck ability also has built into it minus 1 to uh, hit or damage. One of them. Oh, no, I think it's to damage. So minus 1 to, essentially imposes a weakness. So, oh no, is it a hit? Now I can't remember. But yeah, he, one of those he does minus 1, and that will just also help protect my army you know because i i don't really have a way of kind of imposing that on the opponent i don't have any weakness or 
um, spells like that, so he can go in and do that. And so imagine if he's ca going in with the um, Hell Strikers or something, the counter punch from, say, Grotesques will be just monumentally reduced because they hit on four, suddenly they're hitting on five. Potentially, I can't remember which way it goes. Something is getting minus one, and so, I mean, ultimately, the stats should work out the same, that they won't be able to do as, nearly as much damage, and I'll be able to hit again. So, and he's mighty as well, so you can use him as a kind of chaff as well, even though he's very expensive. I wouldn't want to. But, yeah. So that's the change I've gone for. And so he's got the same nerve as the Hellstrike Manticore, like the Stormbringer on Hellstrike Manticore. So it's just like, it's, I'm not really losing much apart from one unit strength and the ability to do more damage on the flanks. But this guy can do more damage most of the time anyway. He's got six attacks, he's got more attacks, and he has that Thunderstruck ability with his Stormstrike. So. I think that's a good change. I've used it in one battle so far. That battle will be coming up soon. It was recorded properly. It was a proper big, big old fashion battle report um, with the same Dan um, Bird, uh, with, who's been doing a few with his halflings. But this time he brought his Kingdoms of Men just for a bit of a change. And I think you'll all enjoy that when I get that all edited up. So these are done. They're out. I've finished the tournament. So it was one win, two losses. What are you going to do? Um, but I feel like I've come through it learning how to use this army so that when I take it to that two-day tournament, I will hopefully be in the top 50%. That's that's really what I'm aiming for, top 50%. Is there a better army that you can use in terms of Reforged Orcs, like a better makeup? Most definitely. Some, maybe something that's all Hell Strikers, or maybe something that's apparently Skulks. Apparently an army full of Skulks is like the bee's knees, but you know what? I'm not going to be making Skulks. If I were to make Skulks, and this is just a little thing, I would buy just standard Orcs from Mantic Range, and then I've got a whole bunch of spare bows from my Goblins, from the Mantic Goblins, and I'm pretty sure they'll fit just perfectly on. Uh, so that would, that would be my easy way of doing it, rather than trying to get the upgrade kit, which is very expensive for a unit that's not great, um, and you need a lot of to get to an okay standard. So that would be my way of doing Skulks. So feel free to do that if you are in the mind of making a Skulk Reforged Orc army, um, and good luck with that. Otherwise, uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next battle report. I'll also do a video about this army because it's now actually done, so I can actually... Because uh, in this time, I still was down 10 Orc models. Like, all of my units were slightly below that model count that I wanted. So in the meantime, I had managed to paint up all the actual final Orcs and glue them on and put on a bit more newspaper stuff so then I can I'm going to show it off in a classic show off my army kind of video that people seem to like and I'm glad because I, I like doing them because I get to show off my army so until then um, keep caffeinated and yeah like and subscribe definitely do that bye